Okay, today I'm going to be showing you a 30 brick double domino effect and then explaining how it works. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. So let's try to figure out how this is happening. Why does it wait till the very last brick falls before they all start shifting down and fitting into place together? Well, let's pick it apart in a series of steps. First, they fall over. So now when they're like this, the question is, can you still have the reverse domino effect happen even though we didn't have them falling over in the first place? Well, let's see what happens when we just jostle this end brick. So then they all snap down into place. So in order to see what's going on, let's look at just one brick. So when we have a brick laying here, when they fall over, the bottom corner of the brick is acting like a focal point. So that bottom corner now acts like a hinge. You can see in this square here how that bottom corner acts like a hinge, basically. So now pay attention to where this edge is when I lift up the brick. So initially the edge is here, but when I lift it up, See how the edge now comes over. And depending on what angle you lift it up, it makes this edge come over more. So if we lift it up the height of one brick now, if it's just barely right on the edge, lift it up the height of one brick, that means that we should get a triangle that has one side that's three and a half inches and another side that is 10 and a half inches. So now we wanna figure out how much overhang this is. Basically, if you draw a triangle here, and then draw a triangle here, what is the length of this triangle? So our brick is three and a half inches high and 10 and a half inches long. So now let's try to calculate what this angle is. Well, if you remember your trigonometry, if you call this angle x here, then the sine of x equals the opposite over hypotenuse. So three and a half over 10.5. So now if you take this and solve for x, then you get x equals about 19.5 degrees. So this angle is 19.5 degrees. And we know that this is a brick on top, so we know that this is a right angle. And we know that all three of these angles equals 180 degrees. So now this angle, which I'll call angle B here, we know that B equals 180 minus 90, minus 19 and a half degrees. So B equals 70.5 degrees. Then we can use trigonometry again to calculate this length. So you solve that and you get L equals, so finally after solving all this, you get L equals 1.17 inches. So this is gonna be kind of hard to measure, but we get about, so I'm getting around 1.2 inches here. So almost right on with my calculation. So if you don't wanna do trigonometry, you could just do a measurement like this. So basically what that means is by lifting it up and putting it on top of another brick, you create around a one inch lip for the other brick to sit on. But the only way that lip stays present is if this brick stays on top of the brick next to it. And as soon as that brick next to it goes away, then the brick falls, that angle changes, and now that one inch lip is now gone. And so now the other brick has no lip to sit on and so it falls. So what this means is that if you space these perfectly, when this brick hits this one and then they fall and slide, 
As long as it lands within one inch of the edge, what will happen is that as soon as this brick pivots and turns to have a zero degree angle right here, then this brick will now fall perfectly snug in with the brick in front of it. So the trigger for the reverse domino only happens when a brick is not laying at an angle. And that only happens at the end brick. So what that means is that they'll all fall over in a normal domino effect until the end brick doesn't have an angle on it. And as soon as it doesn't have an angle on it because there's not another brick in front of it, then this brick will slide off of it and then this brick will slide off of it because they all change their angle and they'll all just slide off of each other. So if you wanna do this on your own, what you do is you start off with them like this. So stack all your bricks like this and do it in a however long a chain you want and then you come back through and turn them all upright like this. And when you're doing it, make sure that you don't let that bottom corner slide because you've placed it exactly where it needs to be. And now that they're all perfectly placed apart like that, then it should work. Uh oh. <laughs> and make sure to do it on a stable surface. Now it's important on the very last brick to have that one spaced a little bit further apart because that one doesn't have the incline angle on it when you're setting it up. And so it should be very much just barely on the edge so that when it gets knocked over, the brick next to it will lie flat. Now before we go on with the experiment, I wanted to show you the new Action Lab box that's out now. The self-pouring fluid box. So what you get when you open it, you get a big thank you from me, instructions, lab book, pencil, you get two pouring cups, a cool periodic table jigsaw puzzle, and then in here you get a syringe, a scooper, gloves, some food coloring, and then this polyethylene glycol powder. So what you do is you mix this powder with water and it makes a self-pouring fluid. And what it is is within the water, this polyethylene glycol has such a large molecular weight that even if you have a very small string hanging out of your cup, then it will pull the rest of the liquid out with it. So it does this really cool effect that when you barely start to pour it, it basically just pours the whole cup out with it. So now you can do your own experiment at home with the self-pouring fluid, pouring it back and forth between these two cups. And then I also have three other experiments to do along with this one. One of them is the self-pouring fluid sped up, so you add water to it and show how it changes, how fast it goes. And then you do the air siphon, where you can actually siphon it up without actually having to dunk the syringe in the liquid. And then if you have an extra blender to use, I call this one breaking molecules. You can show how you can actually reduce the properties of this polyethylene glycol by putting it in a blender and basically chopping up the actual molecules, which is really cool. If you wanna do your very own self-pouring liquid experiment, head to theactionlab.com now to check out the self-pouring fluid action lab box. Now we'll continue on with our experiment. Okay, and this one I've done a little bit tighter overlap. Okay, three, two, one. Dang it. Okay, that last one didn't work. But if I just pull this out, let's see if it works. So when you so when you stack it with a little bit more overlap, you get a tighter fit definitely, but then you get the chance of it not propagating.
So thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest video's out. And I'll put a link in the description so you can check out the Action Lab book as well. It's 30 of my favorite experiments from this channel that you can do at home and I show you how to do them, explain what's going on. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.